it's American history firing on all cylinders, and it's it's another way to understand the complicated 20th century. It's another way, I think, we, we don't set out with any kind of contemporary purpose, but we know how divided we are, and we love stories that remind us of what we share in common, and, and this is one of our great birthrights, country music. You can dance to it, you can cry to it, you can make love to it, you can play it at a funeral, you can, it's just really has something in it for everybody, and people relate to it. Oh, I'm thinking tonight of my goodbye. We don't have the big budgets that the premium cables do or the streaming services do to promote a film. It requires shoe leather, and guess what? That's the best thing. It's like country music, you know? You don't get above your raisin. You get out into the country, you meet people, you go to little towns and you talk to them the way you talk to anybody in San Francisco or New York, and that's how we roll. There's a craft that goes along with it, but at the same time, it's the divine gift. It's that thing you can't explain. So we've handled 100,000 photographs. We've entered into our database over 30,000 of them. We've got 175 hours, 180 hours of interviews. I don't really trust country music to tell its own story. Country music has always been in this, um, in this commodification bit in which, you know, I mean, did they, were they trying to um, create a genre of music or were they trying to, to capture the voice and champion the voice of America's hardest working people? Mm -hmm. 